So here we are, the second rest day of the Vuelta already. And I'm quite sure that nobody would have predicted that Sepp Kuss will be leading the race after 15 stages. I'm Dan Martin, and for this road code analysis episode, we're going to look back at the last six stages and take a closer look at the contenders, the team tactics, and also see if we can make any predictions as we move into this final crucial week of racing. The week started with a TT in Valladolid. Many expected Sepp Kuss to lose big time, potentially even losing the red jersey. By the line, he had lost a not insignificant 1 minute 13 to Remco Evenepoel. But for me, the real comparison was the matchup with his teammates. Roglic and Vingegaard riding the same bike, same equipment, the duo even having the advantage of wearing the team's super fast speed suit, which is notoriously much quicker than the red leader's jersey worn by Kuss. They only managed to take 53 and 11 seconds respectively. Now also consider the extensive wind tunnel testing that both of the team leaders would have gone through. Their TT positions much more finely tuned and more aerodynamic than Sepkus, who I'm also sure does not spend the same amount of time riding the TT bike as his two leaders. So why is this important? I believe it shows that Kuss is actually in better condition than Roglic and Vingegaard. As to produce this result, even though he lost time, he would have needed to produce more power than his two team leaders. Add to this that a short TT like this is a real sign of freshness. And it seems that Kuss has really well recovered from his endeavors this, so far this season. And at this point, it's simply stronger. The day after the TT, we had a sprint stage to Zaragoza before the first big meeting point for the GC riders. What could be seen as the queen stage of the whole race. The finish line atop the mythical Calder de Tourmalet. Going into the stage, we had two seemingly well-matched teams in UAE, Team Emirates and Jumbo Visma, only separated by 57 seconds in the team classification and each with three cards to play in the GC. Just one look at the Team GC after the Calder de Tourmalet stage tells the story of how dominant Jumbo Visma were, increasing their lead in the Team GC to over 10 minutes. We saw a united Jumbo Visma team in distancing their rivals in Jao Almeida and Remco Evenepoel. From the outside, it certainly looks like team policy is to distance as many of their rivals, but also allowing the free riders to battle it out between themselves. On the slopes of Col de Tourmalet, it looked like Roglic was having the most difficulty of the free Jumbo Visma riders. And I saw a slightly uneasy Sepp Kuss, which is only natural when you're in the leader's jersey. But if they were truly united as a team, he would have been content to watch Jonas Vingegaard take as much time as possible. And I do believe that his accelerations kept a decent amount of momentum in that group behind that meant that the gap wasn't what it could have been. It's going to be really interesting to see how this dynamic unfolds over the remaining stages, as these guys are racers and they all want to win. But they have to do it in a way that doesn't open themselves up to being attacked by the other teams and ensure that that red jersey stays within the team. And so to UAE Team Emirates. They are definitely putting on a united front, but personally I never really saw Marc Soler as a podium contender. And I believe that Jao Almeida's time loss on the Tourmalet stage does strengthen the position of Juan Ayuso, because now he has a fully committed team behind him. Although the loss of Jay Vine to a crash kind of limits them tactically, as they seem to lack riders who can really put the other climbers in the red. When the race gets serious, they don't really ride together as a team, all suffering in their own little corner of the group, which in reality is quite typical of a team when they arrive at a race with two leaders and allow the course to decide who is best. I also see a roster of riders lacking in experience in being in this position. They have a promising but very young group of riders with very little Grand Tour experience, let alone knowing how to protect a leader. And we also have to remember that this is only Juan Ayuso's second Grand Tour. I feel like at this point, they'll be very happy to be able to get him back on the podium, which at this point is a distinct possibility as I can really see Jumbo Visma riders tripping over each other in the final week. But also a climb like Angla Roo doesn't really make much difference being in the draft of your teammates. It's a climb that is really man on man and so if he has the legs to do something it's going to be on those torturously steep gradients the big question now is can Sepp Kuss actually win the general classification of the Walter Espanya let's face it he's in a fantastic position with two teammates as his closest rivals so at this point I would really say it depends on him not having a bad day and not having any bad luck the margins are still very tight and we have three difficult finishes in the next three days with Bejas, Anglerou and Linares the Asturian climbs offering up a very different proposition to what we've seen so far in the race with much steeper gradients something that normally Sepp Kuss excels on I saw first hand in the Andorra stage of the 2021 Tour de France when he had attached on the Collard de Bechelis on the steepest gradients which are very similar to the climbs they're going to face this week. Seth went on to win that stage but of course this is a very different situation. He's got the weight of that red jersey on his shoulders and the numerous daily obligations that accompany the red jersey including the podium, press conference and anti-doping that would have been enjoyable to begin with will surely start to weigh as he takes into account the fact that he's getting less recovery time and the enormity of what he's achieving actually becomes a reality. Stage 16's climb to Bejas is a very different proposition as it will be a big bunch 
don't sprint like effort into the bottom, which as well comes with its own dangers. And it would be very difficult for the Jumbo Visma team to place all three leaders right in the front of the peloton at this moment. I'm really interested to see how they juggle protecting three riders at the same time. But also, if one of them has a mechanical issue, how many riders do they commit to the chase back? Or do they leave them to their own devices with the luxury that they've still got two GT riders in the fight? But in summary, right now, I don't see Sepkus losing time, but I do think this being his third Grand Tour in the year, there is going to be a difficult moment in this final week. And it depends what day that falls on. It's often been said that the winner of a Grand Tour is the one whose bad day falls on the least important day. But I also hope that bad luck doesn't rob him of the race. He's already had two minor spills that proved innocuous. I just hope that all the contenders stay safe and healthy and we see a good fight for the red jersey in Madrid.